Hello and welcome to this video. I am David McCulloch and I am the Technical Advisor for Digital here at City and Guilds. In this recording, we will be talking through the Information Communication Technician Endpoint Assessment. So the contents of this video, firstly we will give an overview of who the apprenticeship is actually designed for, the assessment methods of the apprenticeship and what happens at the gateway stage. We will then move into talking about each of the assessment methods, what they are, expectations you in each, as well as hints and tips that you may find useful. These will be grouped together with the first being portfolio and professional discussion before moving on to the project report and project questioning. This apprenticeship is for apprentices looking for a career in the operation of IT and or telecommunication systems, including hardware and software. The available pathways include support, network, and digital communications technician. The assessment methods in this endpoint assessment are a professional discussion, which is underpinned by your portfolio, and a project report and questioning session. Each of these will be explored in more detail during this recording. At Gateway, you will need signed declarations, maths and English at level two, and your portfolio. All of these components will need to be uploaded and reviewed at Gateway before the assessments can begin. Assessment method, portfolio. Portfolio, content and structure. The portfolio you produce is not directly assessed. However, the evidence you include will be reviewed by the independent endpoint assessor to prepare questions for the professional discussion. This professional discussion will include questions from a predefined bank as well as those formulated following a review of your portfolio. The evidence that you include in your portfolio should show the best aspects of your performance against each of the knowledge, skills and behaviours that are specific to this assessment method. Ensure the layout of your portfolio allows you to easily refer to evidence should you need to do so. Providing evidence from real work projects will allow you to refer to when you are actually carrying out the task in question, highlighting what you did and why you completed it in this way. When building your portfolio, if you do not already have a specific approach to this, we recommend using the STAR approach. This stands for Situation, Task, Action, Result and Reflection. This will allow you to document what it is that is needed to be done to complete the task, what was actually carried out, what the result was, before reflecting on if you would carry this out in the same way if you were given the same task in future. Your portfolio can be taken into the professional discussion for reference. Portfolio evidence. Typical types of evidence could include a customer brief and relevant negotiations leading up to a task, witness or customer testimonies following a task, plans of projects and the way these have been designed, copies of any appraisals or reviews during your apprenticeship, any reports you have produced, minutes from team meetings where these are relevant, screenshots with annotations which show the steps you have taken during a task or screenshots of any completed tasks, as well as any completed help desk tickets. These are just examples and are not a must include list. So make sure you are using evidence which is relevant to the tasks that you are completing. The evidence you include should be valid, meaning it should be relevant to the standard you are completing. Authentic, it must be work that you have carried out. Current, the work has been carried out during your time in the apprenticeship. Sufficient, the evidence is sufficient to evidence your competency in the task you are evidencing. And finally, consistent, meaning the evidence you include shows a consistent standard throughout. Work tasks that you might include could be discussing a customer's system requirements or changes, rectifying a customer fault, or creating user documentation. Again, these are just examples for reference. Portfolio hints and tips. Some hints and tips to consider when producing your portfolio. Ensure you are familiar with the knowledge, skills and behaviours you are evidencing. Collect evidence from day one of your apprenticeship, as this will allow you to see your progress, but will also give you a larger bank of evidence to choose from when looking to build a strong portfolio covering all of the KSBs. Ask for feedback from managers, colleagues and other stakeholders for use in your portfolio. And finally, think about your apprenticeship journey and how you can evidence this. A few do's and don'ts to consider. Starting with do's, 
Annotate screenshots you include in your portfolio. Ensure evidence you include covers multiple competencies. Write about what it is you have done. Provide background and context to your organisation, clients and tasks. And finally, present your portfolio in a logical order to enable you to quickly refer to evidence if you need to do so. Moving on to don'ts, make sure you are not vague, make assumptions or ignore what you think might be obvious as the IEPA will not know about your role, organisation or environment in which you are carrying out tasks. Don't use we when discussing tasks as you need to be clear what it is you did and the part that you played in the task. Don't include links to documents or upload EXE files as these will not be accessible for the IEPAs to review your evidence. Assessment method, professional discussion. Professional discussion, content and preparation. Your professional discussion is a structured one-to-one -one conversation between you and an IEPA who has expertise in the subject area. The assessment will take one hour and will be conducted remotely via GoToMeeting or a similar platform. You will need to produce photographic ID at the start of the assessment and the assessment will be recorded for moderation purposes. The professional discussion will explore evidence which has been submitted in your portfolio. You will have engaged in detailed technical discussions during your day-to-day -day role and this assessment aims to mirror that aspect. This is your opportunity to expand on evidence submitted in your portfolio and also allows you to give examples of work completed since its submission if you feel that these give a better depth and breadth of the KSBs. For your preparation, ensure you know the equipment you need and how to use it, review the evidence submitted in your portfolio and have both your portfolio and photographic ID with you. Professional discussion, samples and answering. The content of your portfolio will be discussed during your professional discussion, so ensure you are familiar with its contents. Remember, you can have a copy of the portfolio with you for reference. Now we're going to look at a couple of sample questions to give you a feel for the types of things you may be asked. Firstly, a question on data backups, which covers outcomes K1 and K10. The question is, explain how data is backed up in your organisation. Secondly, a question on types of maintenance covering outcomes K9 and S2. The question is, describe the maintenance that you undertake as part of your role. When answering questions, provide examples of how you have carried out these tasks that you are talking about. Where possible, refer to evidence that's been submitted in your portfolio or refer to competencies of the standard. Ensure you give or confirm your reasons for taking particular actions. Professional discussion, hints and tips. Some hints and tips for the professional discussion. Ensure you have a suitable location. This should be somewhere quiet and private. Check the technology works, such as internet connectivity, camera, microphone and speakers. And have appropriate ID and your portfolio with you. Some do's and don'ts for the professional discussion. Starting with do's, do stay calm and speak clearly and concisely. Ask for questions to be repeated or rephrased if you are unsure. Think about your answers and use examples putting these into the context of your workplace and role. Now for don'ts, don't be vague, make assumptions or ignore what you think is obvious as your IEPA will not know about the company and how they work. Don't search for answers as it is based on what you have done. Don't say we unless you can explain your role in this and don't be scared to lead the discussion. Assessment method, project report. Project report, content and expectations. The project report aims to show your ability to perform the role and duties of an information communications technician by undertaking a project based on a given specification of one of the following roles, support, network, or digital communications technician. This project should not be started until you are confirmed to be through Gateway. You and your employer will select an activity that will meet all the requirements of the assessment. You will then undertake the project before delivering the outcome in the form of a report. You should submit the report within a four week time frame to ensure that sufficient time and resources are available for you to complete this project. The word limit for this assessment 
is 1,500 words, with a tolerance of plus or minus 10%. This is a strict word count, and not being within this tolerance will result in a fail for this component. As a minimum, you need to ensure your project report includes an introduction, the scope of the project including any key performance indicators, how you have achieved the outcomes, your research and findings, the project outcomes, and finally, your conclusion and any potential areas for improvement. Project report, hints and tips. Your project will be completed under normal workplace supervision as the subject of the project should be normal activity within your job role. This could be something such as a specific problem, a reoccurring issue, an idea or opportunity, or providing a service. Your project evidence should be mapped to the KSBs for this assessment and then included in the appendix. The project work carried out and the project report produced should be your own work. If you are working as part of a team for a large scale project, your project should focus on the part you play in this project and what you did in achieving its completion. Some hints and tips for the project report. Make sure you understand the requirement of the project. Be clear about your objectives. Discuss the availability of any resources that are required. Approach the project like you would any other day-to-day -day task and ensure you keep records as you work as this will aid in your evidence collection. Project report, project examples. Some project examples for each of the pathways have been included here. As a support technician, you could be supporting the rollout or installation and commission of new systems or upgrades. As a network technician, you could be maintaining or repairing network equipment. Or as a digital communications technician, you could be installing or commissioning telecoms networks. Assessment method, project questioning. Project questioning, content and preparation. Your project questioning is a structured one-to-one -one conversation between you and an independent endpoint assessor who has subject area expertise. The questioning session will run for around 30 minutes and will be conducted remotely via GoToMeeting or a similar platform. You will need to produce photographic ID at the start and the assessment will be recorded for moderation purposes. The IEPA will ask you a minimum of five questions, which will be generated after reviewing the evidence you have provided in your project report. You can have a copy of your project report with you during the session. The IEPA will make the grading decision based on the outputs of your project report and the answers provided during your project questioning session. When preparing for this assessment, remember this is an opportunity to provide depth and breadth to the outputs of your project report. Also, ensure you know the location of the assessment and the emergency procedures for this location. Be aware of the equipment you need and how to use it. And make sure you have your ID with you. Project questioning, samples and answering. We are now going to look at some possible questions you may be asked. Bear in mind, these will be based off your project, so these are just for reference. The first is looking at improvements and outcome K14. The question is, describe how you have optimised the performance of a system. The second is looking at installation and outcomes K21 and S9. The question is, describe the processes that you followed when upgrading the system. Make sure that when answering questions, you are referring to the project carried out for your report, as this will be the basis of the questions being asked. You will be expected to give or confirm reasons for taking actions, why you have used tools and processes, or even possible options that you might have chosen during the project. Some hints and tips for the project question session are, ensure you have a suitable location for the assessment. This should be somewhere quiet and private. Check all the technology works. This might include internet connectivity, camera, microphone, and speakers, and ensure you have appropriate photographic ID with you. Thank you for referring to this video and good luck with your endpoint assessment.